Us. Us. Hi. Welcome. Thanks for coming back again. Good to see you, Mitch. Great to see you too. Yep, we've had some training, great training today. Uh, and today, what we're going to look at is how to work elbows in a very practical way. Okay, so we talk about elbows and one understands that elbows are techniques and we practice them in basics. But actually making them work with the right sense of distance, timing and so on takes a little bit of work. They're great techniques, very, very uh, successful techniques. Um, I've known people have used them in the past and <laughs> I would never have done anything like that. Um, but realistically, they're a fantastic weapon. I'll tell you why. One, the tip of the ulnar bone here is rock hard. So if you're lightweight, if you're younger, like even teenage kids, uh, or if you have sore hands, or if you don't know how to make a fist, the elbows are the bomb. Now, here's the thing with a fist. In Japanese, interesting. In Japanese, a fist is what's called kobushi. Okay, so that's a kobushi. Anyone can close their hand and make a kobushi. But seiken, seiken in Japanese means the correct fist or the proper fist. So it's very interesting. You don't just close your hands and hit with a fist. In karate, you, you start with a little finger, close with the thumb, make everything right. You make what's called a seiken and you hit with the right area. Now that is actually really, really important because if you don't know how to make a seiken and you use your fist, it's almost a guarantee that you'll damage your hand. Too many moving parts, right? Is that, can I ask a question? Is that, um, for example, a boxer that might wrap their hands a lot and then not wrap their hands in, in a situation? Because um, you, you often hear of boxers having damaged hands from boxing as mm -hmm. well. Is that perhaps because the Saken, or is it just because yes. the hands are wrapped so differently? Well, no, it's because they wrap their hands. Obviously, they wrap their hands to protect their hands. Um, when I worked with um, boxers in the past, sometimes we would train without wrapping their hands so they get a better, tighter feel of squeezing their hand tight. The whole idea of the Saken is. You want to squeeze all the blood out so there's no movement. But the average person doesn't know how to do that. So boxers, they wrap their hands. So even when their hands are, are fully wrapped, even when they squeeze their hands really tight, that's about as far as it goes. Plus the other thing is speed requires a relaxation. So this is why boxers um, are so quick because with the wraps and with the glove, they can afford to throw a snappy fast hand without creating a tight fist. Then what happens is they get in the street and they get into a fight and they throw that snappy hand and their finger breaks or their knuckle breaks or one of the metacarpal snaps. And, you know, so there's a lot of problems with, with uh, an incorrect fist. Uh, boxers will look at karate guys and think they're so stiff and rightfully so, but a good karate fist, it's all about being able to go from relaxation to tight and back again. Now, the reason we're bringing, bringing up the fist is because unless you do your makiwara training, unless you train your fist, it's very easy to damage your hand um, in a fight. That's where the elbows come in. The elbow is super, super hard, super, super effective. So we want to look at one simple drill that you can use and describe, go through some fundamental principles on how to use the elbow and how to not use the elbow. Okay, before that, hey, Rochelle, or Sensei Mike, warm WA, it's hot Queensland today. Daniel, Urs, good to see you. Clarence, Urs, welcome. And Pete, Pete Sharman, good to see you. Okay, so we're going to look at this now and just watch the way we drew this, do this drill. But before we do it, it's really important that we understand the correct way to do an elbow is in line with the shawl, okay? If you want to hit across the face, you hit horizontally in line with the shooter. If you want to hit up, you turn the shooter and bring the elbow up. If you want to bring down, look, look at my hand. I line it up with the shooter. It's always in line with the shooter. So if I want to 
hit there, it's in line with the shoot off. If I want to hit there, then I have to change the alignment of my um, the the mistake people who don't know how to use elbows but want to make is they'll often go here try and push there and they'll hit the muscular part or they'll roll it over there and hit this muscular part okay it's not as soft as this but it's still going to take away uh, um, the energy transfer okay so you want to make sure that this is the ulnar bone okay you want to make sure that you're hitting right on the tip of the ulnar bone and the way you do that is line it up with your shuto, okay, your knife hand. A simple way to approach it is we start here and develop a sense of distance. Range one, kick range. Range two, so kick range, punch range. Now we move into headbutt elbow range. Okay, I call it headbutt elbow range. Other people call it trapping range or things like this. I call it the headbutt elbow range simply because it's uncanny, almost down to the millimeter, how close the range for the headbutt and the range for the elbow are. So right now, I'm not close enough to hit Mitch with a headbutt. I can tell that. Okay, which means I'm all almost. Uh, I'm 100% guaranteed I can't hit with an elbow. But if I get in, now I know I can hit Mitch with a, with a headbutt. Bang. Boom. Which means I can also hit with an elbow. It's, it's uncanny. It's almost down. Another golden rule with headbutts, whilst we're talking about it, if you look at uh, any instructional that teaches you how to draw a face, what happens is you draw the oval, of the head and you draw a line smack across the middle and that's your eye line so the brain kind of plays a trick on us we think that the eyes are actually in the higher part of the head but they're not they're right in the middle if i had my ipad i could show you they're right in the middle but you see if i can use mitch there's the top of the head the bottom of the head see that and the eyes are directly in the middle so if i go here there's the eye line top of the head without changing that I go to the eye line bottom of the head see that is in line with the chin so remember that the eyes are smack in the middle of the skull the head and the mandible the golden rule with head butts it's not hard to imagine you want to hit the bottom half with your top half not around the other way okay so if I want to hit with a head butt I want to come in I can go in that way, I can go in this way, I can go in that way, but the last thing in the world I want to do is go in that way because the one with the thicker skull wins, okay? You don't want to hit top to top. You don't want to hit top to bottom. You want to hit top. I mean, you don't want him to hit top to bottom. You don't want to hit your bottom to the top of his head. You want to hit the bottom of his head with the top of yours. So as a good rule, I never want to pull his head at the back here unless I'm bringing a knee in. If I want to hit with a headbutt, I need to pull under and come under there. But the point is with a headbutt, right now I'm in a good range for a headbutt, which means I'm also in a good range for an elbow. So I call it headbutt elbow range because we naturally develop a proprioception for bumping our heads. We naturally, you know, we bump it on shelves and and things all the time when you're a little kid and gradually you, you, you become a little bit more aware of the danger of a headbutt. So you develop a good sense of distance for whether you can hit something with your head. But you don't have the same sense of distance with your elbow. So there's a shortcut for you. If I can headbutt, boom, I can elbow. If I can't headbutt, I can't elbow. Okay, it's that simple. I can't headbutt, can't elbow. I can headbutt, I can elbow. So that's a really good rule of thumb to keep in mind. Okay, now this magic drill that I love is like this. You can use mitts 
or you can use your hands. Okay, the whole idea is I take a normal fighting stance and I put my little fingers on the mitts or on the hands. And my partner is simply going to give me some sort of kinesthetic signal which hand he wants me to hit with. So if we turn slightly this way so you can see Mitch's hands. And if he wants me to hit with this elbow, he wiggles that hand. Boom, just like that. Just a little wiggle. And that's my signal to do the technique with that hand. Notice one hand is further forward than the other, so it means this elbow here is slightly different to that elbow there. The back elbow requires a little more hip extension to come in. The front elbow doesn't. It's already there. Okay? So the front elbow, is, it's similar to a left jab. The left jab is usually sharper and snappier than a right cross. Well, it's the same with the elbow. The front elbow is a little snappier. Oh, you hit my shoulder there. Horrible. Little snappier than the right. It, the right probably takes, I don't know, I'm a hundredth of a second longer. Long enough. Okay. The front elbow is just snaps there. And the back elbow takes a fraction longer. I need to have good feedback from my partner. I don't want to get into the habit of he he gives and I go and back again. Back again, this hand, back again. I can't, I haven't got time. You always use the analogy of your arm being pulled off by a rope. If the car accelerates off and you're tied to it, there's no way that you can bring the arm back first. If you've ever water skied, you know what it's like. You're waiting, you're waiting, the boat takes off. You don't go backwards first. It just goes boom and takes you like that. So it's the same thing. When the hand signals I, I literally want to tell myself my elbow is going nowhere except forward you've got to hear the shoulder that time like yeah. Yeah. yeah horrible okay the elbow goes nowhere except forward bang the second part of the drill which is very important is i need to keep my hands up so I come up into coxcomb. So when I throw, let's say I, I do my left hand here. When I throw my left hand, the right hand simply migrates to coxcomb. Okay? Just in case when I throw, he throws a hook or he throws um, and his own elbow, for example. I have to develop the habit of having my coxcomb up. Okay? So when I go left hand... Right hand goes coxcomb, almost parallel. When I go right hand, left hand goes up, again, almost parallel. So as a training partner drill, he's constantly looking out to make sure that my coxcomb is in the correct, posi correct position, like that. If you're young, sharp, and... and mean and hungry, you snap this so fast that you tell yourself you finish the technique even when you feel the touch. So here, there like that. And I'm not anticipating. I need to learn to not anticipate. I simply feel. So He goes left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And then he tricks me and goes left again. If I'm anticipating, I'll, I'll miss it. So if I screw up, and this is a good part of the drill. So he's there. I screwed up. What does he do? He repeats the same thing until I get it. And if I keep missing, I keep. he goes... Other hand, he lets me know. I have to make sure that my kinesth kinesthetic reaction to that stimulus is correct. I don't want to anticipate. It's really important for when you're doing kumite as well because you may think that he's going to kick there, but he may not. So it's we simply watch. We simply feel there like that, whichever hand 
he pokes. If I drop my hand, he lets me know, get your coxcomb up. Boom. And that's happens, that has happened to me a lot where he'll tag this one. I'm halfway through. I realize I've made a mistake. Instantly correct the mistake. Oh. Okay, like that. That's the simple rule. So I'll give Mitch a turn at it now. So I simply keep my thumbs approximately touching. That if you've got mitts on, keep the mitts basically touching, and that'll stop you from your hands drifting away, which seems to be what people do. Don't want the hands to start to drift away. So I keep touching my thumbs together. Oops, I'm doing a mitch. One. Wrong hand. Oops. Bang. Mitch would never make a mistake. He's doing that on purpose. Just us. Correct. Yeah. Not. <laughs> Like that, you see? So that's the simple drill, the first part of the drill. That is an excellent way to overcome the feel that you need to hit with excessive power. Think of kinetic energy, half mass times velocity squared. It's all about that impulse, that moment of impact being very explosive. Whereas if you try to wind it up, sometimes you'll bring the antagonist into play and it'll actually slow it down, which means you're exponentially slowing or decreasing the kinetic energy. Okay. Can I make a comment on that, Sean? Um, from a speed training point of view, a lot of people in their training want to emphasize speed training. And when it comes to speed training, the way we break it down from a sub-quality point of view is the first sub-quality of speed training is detection and reaction to stimulus. So that's a sub-quality. So we have the somatics, right? We're talking about the somatics here. And the somatic we're talking about is speed. speed. Which and is they one have of flexibility, strength, speed, endurance, and um, yeah. sub, uh, sturdiness. Sturdiness, the impact resistant, resilience. So what is the sub-quality of speed that we're working so on? So the first one is detection and reaction to stimulus. So in a 100-meter sprint, that's being on the start, and then you hear the starter's gun go off. So when it comes to detection and reaction to stimulus, there's three types. There's visual, auditory, and kinesthetic so visual might be a cue when you're with your sparring partner and you see they're going to do something auditory is an example of a, a, a gunshot going off for a 100 meter sprint as an example and kinesthetic is something that Xi'an just showed then as well you have a feel you feel something go off and you respond to it so this is a fantastic drill from a physical preparation point of view to to, to improve speed as a speed sub quality this is a fantastic drill it's really important and good on you daniel it's really important that you recognize that detection and reaction to stimulus needs to be based on good technique. Otherwise, at a higher and higher level, you can't keep up. And on that, that's so interesting. The second sub-quality of speed is actually agility and coordination. So we, you go from detection and reaction to stimulus, exactly as Xi'an just said, re recognizing there's a stimulus at play. And then the second thing is agility and coordination, which is a technical thing, that you move well, you execute well. The third thing is acceleration. It's only at the third part do we worry about the acceleration exactly like you said before. So it's so interesting that it marries up so beautifully. Yes. So once again, just quickly looking at that, it's really important that you understand how important it is to have your shoulders relaxed. Your weight for the left elbow is... If you could see my legs, when I throw the left elbow, my weight goes to the left leg. Left elbow, left leg. There, left elbow, left leg. There's not a large motion. When I do it quickly, watch my leg when I do it quickly, there's not much, not a big turn in it. With the right leg, the power in the right elbow has to keep the weight on the right leg so you get the right leg turn, but you don't move across to my left leg like that. So the weight goes to the left. You keep the weight on the right leg. You see my spine stays where it is. 
my weight stays on the right leg. Okay, so now with the left leg, left elbow, right leg, right elbow. It's a good drill. If you notice, when I throw the left leg, my left heel comes up. When I throw the right leg, my right heel comes up. That's very important that you recognize that the weight stays on the left for the left elbow. The weight stays on the right for the right elbow. Often because the right is the back, we think the weight needs to go forward and the weight goes to the left leg. That happens, it becomes a push and it's also very difficult to recover quickly back to default position. You don't want to move over there. So it's important if I do it, start slow, line it up with the knife hand, make sure the weight is correct. You can even pause here, feel that the weight is correct. Is the coxcomb up? Is this elbow relatively down? Don't have it up here. Is it relatively down? And is my elbow in line with my knife hand? There. The other beautiful thing is as I throw the elbow, I need to keep my face relatively centered on dominant head position because if I turn my head, there's too much of an opening here to get counted. Okay, so relatively, I keep my head facing forward. See, my head doesn't turn much. I don't go like that. Keep my head relatively facing forward. I don't turn like that. Okay, so the left elbow there. I'm looking at the camera. In reality, I'll be looking at my partner. Boom, left elbow there. Right elbow there. Okay, start off slowly if, if you're just using this drill for the first time. Start off slowly so everything is in the right place at the right time. And then come back. Hit, feel, is my weight correct? A cox came up in line with my knife hand and back. Then once you have it, you can start to pick it up a little bit snappier. You want to try and get it. Remember, it's the speed that does the damage, not the body weight power. Kinetic energy, half mass times velocity squared. For all intents and purposes, mass is our body weight. So kinetic, the velocity, the speed of it, for all intents and purposes, the speed is exponential in terms of the power it generates. Okay? That's a really effective, simple drill awesome. that you can use. Uh, remember, as Mitch pointed out, that uh, drills to help you detect and react to stimuli are very, very important. In, in, in karate, we probably don't do enough of them. We usually leave the training for detection reaction to stimulus to kumite. But uh, over the years, if you could spend a little bit more time working on the whole notion of um, developing a sharp, fast detection and reaction to stimulus is very important. I always thought if I was a Formula One driver, this would have been one of the skills I do because the whole idea is when you feel the uh, stimulus on your finger, you tell yourself you've already finished. So I say to the kids, when you hear the count, what does that mean? And they go, you've already finished the technique. You don't hear the count and then go, you hear the count, boom, you're finished and you're back to default straight away, like that ECG thing. 100% bang, 100% bang, 100% bang. You don't kind of hang around up here, okay? So that's our little drill for uh, developing uh, elbow techniques, okay? Uh, if you've got any questions, hit me up. Now, remember, uh, if you like what we do and if you think he's good looking, get on to Patreon and support the channel through Patreon. That's very, very appreciated. Uh, otherwise, hit subscribe, all that sort of stuff. We're up to about 2.28 million now. I mean, thousand. Yeah. yeah. I think so. Just what's a couple of zeros between friends. Get the word out. If you like what we're doing, if you think there's some benefit in it, by all means, pass the word out. That's always the best uh, way to spread 
the news is word of mouth to your friends, your students. Um, I don't even care if you pay people to join. Um, that's okay too. We'll take that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hit hit subscribe, hit the little bell, and away you go. Karate golf and forget that the secret to controlling someone else is gaining control over yourself, not just physically, but mentally too. Yes, indeed. And uh Masayama, I have to say, even though Sensei Mike is Goju, or Masayama is Goju, but he was famous for that. I once spoke to one of Soulsai's contemporaries. Soulsai introduced me to him, actually. His name was Takeda Sensei. He's a 10th Dan. And Soulsai said, I've been challenged in the newspapers, been challenged in magazines being challenged on tv and on the telephone and on the radio but only one man ever walked up to me face to face and said you and me right now and that was takeda sensei and takeda sensei is going oh please you know that was in 1969 i think it was so over 50 years ago and takeda sensei would probably be in his 80s now but um he went oh please no, that were the, the he said that was the rash behave, behavior of a foolish young man. And many years later, I had dinner with him and I said, when you challenged Solsai, what chance did you give yourself? And I'm talking about this because of Mike's comment. Karateka, often forget that the secret of controlling someone else is gaining control over yourself, not just physically, but mentally. Okay. I said, what chance did you give yourself? He said, Everything depended on Masayama's reaction. He said, at the moment that I challenged him, it was 50-50. He said, 10 seconds later, it was 90-10. <laughs> <laughs> and 15 seconds later, it was 100-0. And he knew it was 100-0 because of the way Masayama mentally controlled himself and that projected into Takeda Sensei. Very interesting story. Very. You know, so that's a really good point. Us. Francis, good on you. Us young, everyone going to miss. Happy New Year. Good. Yep. Thank you from all the way from Montreal. Thanks, guys. Look, I know it's a short session for us. Normally we talk for three hours and then practice for five minutes. Yeah. But, <laughs> but anyway, I hope you got something out of that. That if you got any questions, go away, drill it, Daniel. If you if you do it at training at night, drill it and drill it and see if there's something that you're not certain about. There is a second part to the drill, which we'll do maybe next week or sometime. But this one drill is worth uh, working on. Remember, front hand's like a left jab. It's sharp and smart and snappy. Back hand's like a right cross. It's also sharp and snappy, but there's a little bit more time into it. Always line everything up. If you want to hit up, knife hand up. Hit down, knife hand down. Hit across, knife hand across. Always get the cocks comb up. Body weight left for the left elbow. Body weight right for the right elbow. It's the same range. Can I hit Mitch with an elbow now? I know that I can't because I can't headbutt him, so the elbow would also miss. But if I, now I can headbutt him, and now the elbow will work. So remember, if you're not certain whether you're in the right range, uh, can you headbutt him? If you can, you can elbow him. Okay. There you have it. Us. That's Us. fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Love you to see you all. Us. Great real living. Yeah, good on you, Daniel. Thank you, as always. I missed the beginning. We'll watch when I posted. You didn't, we were just um, going through that one drill today, Marco. But anyway, it's worth looking at the beginning as well. Us, thank you, guys. Appreciate it very much. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Um, January 1, I had a fantastic day at uh, in Japan, um, and I went to Masayama's tomb, and I've taken some great video of that. Once I edit all that together, I'll post that up on the awesome. YouTube channel as well. Us, thank you very much. Awesome. Thanks, Mitch, awesome. Thank as you. always. Appreciate it. See you guys.